Do you believe the Saudis account of what happened uh, to that um, journalist? Do you believe that there was a fist fight and then the guy uh, died and then they forgot to call the ambulance and instead called the bone saw person? And I mean, does, does that strike you as credible? So let, let me go back to the first thing you said, which is I, I don't have the Middle East. I'm, I'm, I was given the Middle East peace process between the Israelis and the Palestinians, and I've dealt with a lot of the uh, other uh, regional partners in that effort. Uh, the president has a, has a great foreign policy team led by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Ambassador Bolton, and uh, Nikki Haley's done a great job at the UN, and Secretary Mattis. So we've got a great team, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I have one small component of it. Uh, with regards to the situation in Saudi Arabia, uh, I'd say that right now as an administration, we're more in the fact-finding phase, and uh, we're obviously getting as many facts as, as we can from the different places, and uh, then we'll determine which facts are, are credible, and then after that, the President and the Secretary of State will make a determination as to uh, what we uh, you know, deem to be credible and what actions we think we should take. I I'll also say that um, uh, we have to be able to work with our allies. And Saudi Arabia has been, uh, I think, a very strong ally in terms of pushing back against Iran's aggression, which is uh, funding a lot of terror in the region, whether it's the Houthis in Yemen or it's, it's Hezbollah or Hamas. We have uh, a lot of terrorism in, in, uh, in the region. The Middle East is a rough place. It's been a rough place for a very long time. And we have to be able to pursue our strategic objectives. Mm -hmm. But we also have to deal with, obviously, what, what seems to be a terrible situation. Well, let's just stay with it. So, I mean, you said that um, you're going to try to uh, get to the facts. Do you trust the Saudis to investigate themselves? I mean, it seems like MBS is like the prime suspect. and He's also the prime investigator. I mean, do you trust the Saudis to sort this out? Yeah, like I said, I mean, we're getting facts in from multiple places. And then once those facts come in, um, the Secretary of State will, will, will work with our national security team to help us determine what we want to believe and, and what we think is credible and what we think is, is not credible. Even, even Trump says there's like deception and lies. I mean, do you, I mean you, do, you, do you see anything that, that seems deceptive? I see things that are deceptive every day. I see them <laughs> in the Middle East. I see them in Washington. And uh, so again, I think that we, we have our eyes wide open. I think that, uh, again, the, the president is focused on what's good for America. What are our strategic interests? Uh, you know, where do we share interests with other countries? Let's work towards those. But uh, yeah, every day we deal with people who are trying to deceive us in different ways. But our job is to see through it, uh, but also to, to stay focused on what's best for the American people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the president's fully committed to doing that. Um, how, what advice have you given the president in this situation? Uh, so uh, the advice I've given the president in this situation, like in all other situations, uh, will stay between me and the president. So. <laughs> well. Um, well, the, the, in the, re the reports, it says um, that you wanted to give the Saudis more time and more space. How accurate is that kind of stuff? You know, I, I learned this probably very uh, much more in my first six months, which was that uh, when I talk to the president, I, I make sure I am just talking to the president. So uh, there's been a lot less reporting on kind of what advice I give him and don't give him. And I think we <laughs> both learned to make sure that that advice stays between us. So. Uh, again, unless these people have magic sources, I, I don't know how their, their, their reporting's been accurate. Um, uh, what kind of advice have you given MBS in this whole situation? Uh, just to be transparent, to be fully transparent. The, the world is watching. This uh, is a very, very serious uh, accusation uh, and a very serious situation. And to, to make sure you're, you're transparent and, to, um, and to, to take this very seriously. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to that? How, how, how did he respond to that counsel? Uh, we'll see. I mean, I, I know that the uh, Secretary of State had some good meetings over there, and uh, and um, and we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, is anything anything about this kind of just shaking your basic confidence in MBS as a partner? You know, the you know, I think a lot of people were making a big bet on MBS. Here's a guy; he's a reformer. Um, people on Wall Street, Davos, people were really betting on him. I think you made a bet on him. Uh, anything happened out of this that makes you reassess that? Look, like I said, once we have all the facts, then we'll make an assessment. But uh, again, I think that our administration's made a lot of gains in our fights against terrorism. We have to deal with the long-term ideology of, uh, of extremism, and Saudi Arabia is a critical partner in that. I mean, they're the custodian of the two holy sites, uh, which is very significant in, in the religion of Islam. And a lot of the reforms they've been making there to help us 
track down the uh, you know, terror financing and then also to uh, push back against people who are perverting the religion uh, have been uh, very historic over the last year. So uh, we're hopeful we can keep pushing forward with a lot of the uh, initiatives that further American interests and that push back against Iran's aggression. And so we're going to stay focused on that. So that, 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 that balance, though, you, we've got the strategic objectives, but then you've got this, um, you know, real, I think, violation of human rights and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I guess my, I think the, the core of the core of it, like the people, the people who are like mad at Jared Kushner right now, is I think people feel like we got this, this American prince, he's making friends with the Saudi prince, but the Saudi prince like killed the dissident and it's your fault because if you hadn't been friends with him, he wouldn't have felt like he could get away with it. How do you respond to those kind of critics? I'm not even sure where to start with that. <laughs> um, look, I, I don't respond to the critics. I think that you know my job is to every day you know focus on what are the objectives I have to accomplish. Uh, things come up every day that uh, can make that more challenging, um, but we have to work through it. I mean, it, and you look at all the different you know projects I've worked on from the start in prison reform. We've had um, you know setbacks. Some were were self-inflicted. Some were were not. Uh, in the Mexico deal the, and the Canada deal, we had a lot of setbacks. Some were self-inflicted, some were not. Uh, but again, you know, there's a short period of time that you're serving in government. And uh, what we have to be doing is figuring out how do we leave our government much better off than we found it. And, and you know, I come in every day trying to figure out how do we push forward to, uh, to accomplish the objectives that will make the American people better off. And so, um, so that I don't really spend a lot of time worrying about the critics. If it's somebody who knows me, somebody who who I respect um, and they want to give me advice or, or tell me something I'm doing wrong, I'm, I, I want to hear that. Uh, but if it's just critics out there, I, I don't pay a lot of attention to that.